For casting a spell, Flora should put these stones in the correct order. She has four of them, purple, green, red, and blue. The instruction says, 1. The red one only has one stone next to it. 2. The green and purple stones aren't next to each other. 3. The green stone is the last one. Can you help Flora? If the red stone only has one other stone next to it, then it's either the first one or the last one. But since green is the last one, then red is the first one. If the green and purple stones aren't next to each other, then there's the blue stone between them. So, the correct order is red, purple, blue, and green. It was midday. Kaylin was exploring a big local forest. She found an abandoned mansion and entered it. The door closed behind her back and wouldn't open. Oh, no. Kaylin got trapped inside. There were three other doors leading to freedom, but there was a catch. Behind the first door, there was a huge pit that would take her miles underground. Behind the second door, there was a magnifying glass that concentrated sunlight and burned everybody and everything that entered. Behind the third door, there was a hungry and dangerous lion that would eat anybody and anything that entered. Uh oh. How can Kaylin escape? Kaylin should wait until sunset. When the sun goes down, the second door with the magnifying glass won't be dangerous anymore. Amelia, Belle, Chloe, and Della are identical quadruplets who always prank people. One day, one of the girls' teachers had to let Amelia leave the class early. She had a doctor's appointment. But the woman wasn't sure which girl was Amelia. The quadruplets had decided to help her. Here is what they said. Amelia is one of the girls standing in the middle. No, Amelia is one of the girls standing on the sides. I'm Amelia. I'm not Amelia. Three girls lied and one told the truth. Who is Amelia? If Amelia is the first girl, then two girls told the truth, the second and the fourth ones. If Amelia is the second girl, then the first and the fourth girls told the truth. If Amelia is the third girl, then the first and the third ones told the truth. But if Amelia is the fourth girl, then only the second girl told the truth. So, Amelia must be the fourth girl. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She found a witch's house petted her black cat and asked the witch to send her home. The witch wanted to play a game. If Esme won, she'd send her home. But if Esme lost, she'd have to stay with the witch forever. We'll be saying numbers between 1 and 10. The next player will have to choose a number that's between 1 to 10 greater than the previous one. The first person to say 50 wins. You can start. How can Esme win? If she wants to say 50, she needs the witch to say a number between 40 and 49. So, before 50, she has to say 39. If she wants to say 39, the witch has to say a number between 29 and 38. So, Esme has to say 28, and before that, 17, and before that, 6. So, Esme must start with 6, and then say 17, 28, 39 and 50. Cassidy woke up in a dungeon and couldn't remember what happened to her. She needed to get out, but the door was locked and required a password. Can you guess what the password is? Every next number is made by moving the last digit of the previous 4 to the front. So, the password must be Four, seven, two, eight. Mrs. Davies is an elderly lady telling a story of her life. After I lived one-fourth of my life, I got my first car. I married one-twelfth of my life later. One-sixth of my life later, 
I started a business. One fourth of my life later, I got my first granddaughter. She just turned 18. How old is Mrs. Davies? Let's say Mrs. Davies is X years old. One fourth of her life, till she gets her first car, X is four. Then we add 12 till her marriage. X till opening her business, 4 till the birth of her granddaughter, and finally, 18 years from then till now. It should all be equal to X. If you solve this equation, you'll figure out that X is equal to 72. So, Mrs. Davies must be 72 years old. Esme was walking in the forest, and you know what? She didn't get lost this time. She knew how to get home, but the other road led to the witch's house, and the girl recently came up with a cool riddle for the witch. So, Esme decided to pay her a visit. She offered a deal. If the witch couldn't solve her riddle, Esme would get her cat. The witch agreed, and Esme gave her a square piece of paper, 4 inches by 4 inches, with a total area of 16 square inches. Turn it into a square with a total area of 8 square inches without a ruler. How can the witch do it? The witch should fold the four corners of the square towards the middle. This way, she'll get a square that is exactly twice as small as the original one. Apparently, the witch gets to keep her cat this time. There's a box filled with balls of different colors. Five red ones, eight blue ones, and eleven purple ones. Allison has a tricky task. Blindfolded, she has to keep picking up balls until she's sure that she has balls of at least two different colors. What's the minimum number of balls she should pull out of the box? In the worst case scenario, Allison will be picking up balls of the same color until there are no more of them left in the box. The majority of balls are purple, so if she picks up a purple ball every single time, it'll be 11 balls. And only after that will she get a ball of a different color. So, she should pick up 12 balls. Okay, you ready? Oliver was walking near the river in the evening when a group of people dressed in black caught him. All of them were wearing masks. Their leader offered Oliver three options. They could throw the guy into the sea with hungry piranhas. He could choose to end up in the ocean swarming with sharks. Or he could opt for a river with hippos. What should Oliver choose to survive? Piranhas only live in freshwater. The guy should pick the sea with the piranhas. An expedition set up camp in the middle of a desert. They were planning to spend several days in that place. But when they woke up, their truck had disappeared. Luckily, they had enough food to last a week, but no power and little water. But there was more to come. Three days later, one of the team members disappeared. The leader of the expedition questioned the remaining people. Michael said he had been wandering around, trying to find water. Emily said she had been playing games on her smartphone. Evelyn claimed they had been sleeping all day long to save energy. And Henry said he had been preparing his research paper in his tent. Now, who's lying? Emily. In three days, her phone would have already run out of battery. There are 100 books on a shelf. To count off 10 of them, you'll need 10 seconds. How much time you'll spend counting off 70 books? It will take you 30 seconds. You'll need this time to count off 30 books, and the remaining ones will add up to 70. Sophia's sister, Chloe, visited her on Saturday. The women had a meal and talked about their lives. Chloe had been promoted. Her husband had recently presented her a diamond ring, and they were going to have a vacation in Hawaii. Chloe didn't have such amazing news. 
She only listened to her sister and complained about life. Right after lunch, Chloe felt unwell. She paled and lost consciousness. Sophia called an ambulance. They rushed Chloe to a hospital and hardly had enough time to save her life. It turned out the woman had been poisoned. The police came to Sophia to ask her a couple of questions. She was shocked. We ate the same food. I cooked chicken and made a vegetable salad. Nothing exotic. After examining the food, the police officers arrested Sophia for trying to poison her sister. But how did she do it? The poison was in the bottle with the salad dressing. Chloe added some vinaigrette to her dish, while Sophia didn't touch the bottle. The moral? Stop complaining so much. A small cafe in Boston is called Nine Lanterns, but there are only seven lanterns hanging outside. The owner knows about this mistake and can easily correct it, but he doesn't. Why? When the wind took away two lanterns some time ago, the man wanted to replace them. But before he could do it, he noticed that more people started to come into his cafe. They told him two lanterns were missing, and then stayed to drink coffee. Jackson came to visit his friend Aiden, who he hadn't seen in ages. They had a great time, gossiping and drinking tea. But Jackson had completely forgotten Aiden had one quirk. He loved making up riddles and never let anyone leave his house without cracking one or two of his newest ones. This time, his question was, what do you swallow that can swallow you? Can you help Jackson get home? Hey, it's already late. The answer is water. Jackson was smart enough to know he won't be able to leave Aiden's house after just one riddle. True to his expectations, another riddle was waiting for him. What is lower with a head on top than without it? Jackson took his sweet time, but eventually he realized the right answer was a pillow. Could he go home now? Apparently not yet, but Aiden promised it would be the last riddle for the evening. He told his friend, Hannah's birthday is on January 23rd, but she always celebrates it in the summer. Why? Luckily, Jackson had just returned from his trip to Australia. He immediately realized that Hannah lived in the Southern Hemisphere. There, January is the hottest month of the year. Students knew they would have an exam on Friday, but their strict professor didn't tell them the exact time. When one guy gathered enough courage to ask about it, he got a weird reply. If 11 plus 2 equals 1, 10 plus 6 equals 4. If you manage to figure out the answer, you won't miss the exam. Do you know when the students should meet with their professor? At 4 p.m. 11 o'clock plus 2 hours is 1 p.m. Then 10 o'clock and 6 hours is 4 p.m. James called his wife Mia and told her he would be at home by 8 o'clock. They didn't plan anything special for that evening. But when he arrived at 2 minutes past 8, the woman was furious. Why was she so angry? Mia thought her husband would come home by 8 p.m., but he appeared at 8.02 a.m. the next morning. Uh Uh-oh. Look at these two ladies. They both seem to be filthy rich, but only one of them actually is. Can you figure out who's fake rich? It's the girl on the left. She's taking a photo with a luxury car in the background. But there's someone in the driver's seat. 
and this person looks rather shocked. One elderly man could only use a public telephone to make his calls. Once the phone stopped working, the man informed the phone company. He waited and waited, but no one came to fix the phone. Several days later, the man visited the company again and said something. The day after, the phone was working again. What did the man say? He said people use the phone to make calls without paying. Look at this picture attentively. What's wrong with it? The pitcher the woman is holding is empty. Then where's the milk coming from? Mark has always been jealous of his friend Liam's achievements. This week, they're both taking part in a battle of wits. Mark decides to do everything possible to win this time. And the first task is to guess the word. It has seven letters, and it is very heavy. But if Mark takes away two letters, he'll get eight. If he takes away one letter, he'll get 80. What word is it? The first riddle is a success. Mark finds the right word. It's weighty. The next question is even trickier. A man went around the world in a ship, and still, he was always inside of land. How is it possible? It doesn't take Mark long to figure out the man was in a spaceship orbiting Earth. The next thing Mark knows, he's locked in a room. Wow! There are four doors there. He's entered through one of them, and he can't use it again. The first door leads to the room with high-voltage wires hanging above the wet floor. Behind the second door, there's a water-filled room swarming with piranhas. And the third door hides a room where acid, flesh-melting rain is falling from the ceiling. Which door is more or less safe to enter? Mark opted for the first door and didn't regret it. It was safe because he didn't let his body come into contact with the wires and the wet floor at the same time. It turned out the next task was the last one in this competition. Mark was looking forward to finding out the winner, but first he had to do some brain work. The world's tallest tower is finally finished. It took five years to build it. Every next year, the construction doubled in height. How many years did it take the tower to reach half its current height? Four years. If the tower grew twice taller every year, it had to be half of its final height a year before it was completed. And if you're wondering about the results of the competition, it ended in a tie. Duh. Luna has two friends, Jack and Owen. On her birthday, the girl wants to go to the movies with the guys. But they don't know each other, and Luna's worried they might feel uncomfortable. But there's also another problem. She spent way too much money this month. But if she invites the guys, she's going to pay. Now, she's trying to understand what is cheaper. To invite both guys at the same time, or go to the movies with each of them in turn. Can you help Luna? It'll cost the girl less to invite her two friends at the same time. This way, she'll only have to buy three tickets. If she goes with each of them, she'll pay for four tickets. It was a sunny summer day without a single cloud in the sky. The ship was in the harbor. There were many people on the shore. They gathered there to look at the vessel. Suddenly, the ship started to sink. There was nothing wrong with it, and all of its systems were functioning correctly. The weather was fine, and the sea was calm. But the ship still disappeared in the blink of an eye. What happened? Well, 
Well, nothing unexpected. Submarines are supposed to travel underwater. Nathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet, but his whole family knew about his plan. They were aware that the guy would return at midnight. They decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. No chores for them for one week. Not to fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room and started to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make pizza, and Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started meditating. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. The CEO of a large company called the police. He was sure that one of his employees, Victoria, had stolen a memory card with secret information. She was going to sell it to the competitors. The police arrived at Victoria's house, but the woman didn't let them in without a warrant. The officers had to leave to get all the necessary papers. When they came back, Victoria was already sitting in her car, ready to drive off. The police officers arrested the woman. They searched her car and clothes, but found nothing. And then, when they were about to give up, one of the detectives realized where Victoria kept the memory card. Can you figure it out? When the police first came to her, the woman had her hair down. But after that, Victoria changed her hairstyle. The memory card is in her bun. Martin was driving past a bus stop when he saw three people standing there. One of them was Monica, a woman he had a crush on. Martin also spotted Sam, his friend, and an elderly lady who looked like she was freezing. Unfortunately, Martin had a two-seater car. What should he do? He should let Sam borrow his car and stay at the bus stop with the girl he likes. This way, Sam will be able to give a lift to the elderly woman, and Martin will have more time to get to know Monica better. During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police he wanted to save a bag with money, but he had to lace up his boot right in front of the emergency kit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he recovered, the money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested? All emergency doors open outward. Detective Adams came to the park to have lunch in the sun, but his attention was drawn by three men running around a fountain. Each of them was shouting, Thief! Catch the thief! The detective was confused. Who was the real thief? That's why he just kept watching. After some time, the distance between the men shortened. Detective Adams immediately realized who the real thief was. Can you figure it out too? If the third man was the thief, the second one would only have to turn around to catch him. The same goes for the second man, which means the man running in first is the criminal. Someone robbed a bank in a large city. A police detective went to visit the main suspect. I've been feeling unwell all this week, and I haven't left my apartment for three days. I didn't even need food. My fridge is full. You can make sure yourself, the suspect said, and indeed opened his fridge. But the detective realized the man was lying and arrested him. How did he figure it out? First of all, the bread on the table looks fresh. Plus, if the man had been staying inside for three days already, his fridge wouldn't be that full. Cassie won a trip to a luxury resort in the Maldives. She goes there on a boat along with three other hotel guests. One of these billionaires is fake. Can you guess who?
This guy sneaks silverware from the buffet and puts it in his bag. If he's really rich, why would he need that? Speaking of imposters, one of the boat crew members doesn't belong here. Can you guess who? This waitress hides a police badge under her floral garland, so she's probably working undercover. Finally, Cassie comes ashore. Three porters offer to carry her suitcase. Can you help her choose the right guy? The first guy is a runaway criminal. See this poster on the pier? The second guy is a ghost. He's too transparent for a human being. Therefore, Cassie should choose the third guy. The hotel manager offers Cassie three options to choose from. A room on the eighth floor with a gorgeous sea view. A luxurious apartment on the second floor with a garden view. Or a separate authentic bungalow on the shore. What would you choose? The first option doesn't exist because the hotel is only a five-story and there's neither an air conditioner nor a fan inside this bungalow. So Cassie should choose the second option. On the beach, Cassie meets triplets, Sienna, Gemma, and Emma. Emma borrows $20 from Cassie. The next morning, Cassie meets one of the triplets in the lobby, but they're so identical that Cassie can't distinguish them. We know for sure that Sienna always tells the truth, while Gemma and Emma always lie. What three-word question should Cassie ask in order to get back her $20? The correct question is, are you Gemma? Sienna, who only speaks the truth, would say no. Gemma, who always lies, would also say no. And Emma would say yes, because she's a liar. Therefore, if the answer is yes, Cassie can demand her money. And if the answer is no, Cassie can ask Sienna or Gemma to remind Emma about her debt. After breakfast, Cassie goes diving. She sees a lot of identical clownfish underwater, but one of them doesn't belong here. Can you spot the odd fish out? This one over here. Underwater, Cassie finds a treasure chest, but it's locked. Can you help her crack the combination lock? There are three turtles painted on the treasure chest. Each turtle has a certain number of rings on its shell. It's a hint. If we count the rings, she'll get the code. Eight, Four, five. Cassie opens the treasure chest and finds a pearl necklace. She goes to the local jewelry market hoping to sell it. John says, This jewelry is not so precious, but I can offer you $50 for one pearl. Noah says, Trash! These pearls are fake! Five dollars! This is my last price! And Mia says, Madam, we can sell it at auction. Rich guys will pay hundreds of dollars for this necklace. I can be your agent and take 15% of the revenue. What do you say? One of these guys is a scammer. Can you guess who? Noah is wearing another person's work badge. Therefore, he had stolen someone else's identity. Cassie wants to buy a new swimsuit. She walks into a fitting room and sees these three pairs of legs. Can you guess who's broke? All three women have relatively new sandals, but let's take a look at their toenails. The first lady has an excellent fresh pedicure. The second one doesn't have any nail polish but maybe she just prefers to look au naturel. And the third lady has toenails with peeled nail polish. 
therefore, she's the one who's broke. In the hotel lobby, Cassie meets two of her roommates, Tina and Jeff. One of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who just by looking at this picture? Tina is a werewolf. She has handcuffs on her leg. Cassie goes to the beach to sunbathe. There's a vampire on one of these sun loungers. Can you spot where exactly? This pile of ash on the right used to be a vampire. There's a wedding ceremony on the beach. Unfortunately, after dinner, all the males at this party turned into zombies. Can you guess which zombie is her husband? It's this guy. He's wearing a ring. In the evening, Cassie arrives at an abandoned haunted village to film a video for her vlog. She spots five weird things about this place right away. Can you see them too? These orchids have teeth. Who left these huge claw marks on the wall of this house? It's summertime, but there's a snowman in the garden. There are two moons in the sky and this cow doesn't have any shadow. Cassie returns to the hotel and sees a hot mess. Someone has been rummaging through her stuff. She interrogates three suspects. The maid says, I cleaned your room in the afternoon. All your clothes and personal belongings were neatly folded in the closet. When I left, I locked the door. The plumber says, I also entered your room in the afternoon to fix the toilet. Luckily, everything's fine now. And Cassie's neighbor says, I was listening to music with headphones, so I didn't notice anything weird. Who's lying? It's the plumber. He said he fixed the toilet, but it's still clogged. One of the hotel guests, Peter, likes Cassie. He wants to impress her and shows her some pictures from his travel blog. But Cassie spots a fake right away. How? Take a look at the wind direction in this picture. In the background, the wind is blowing to the left, but his hair is blowing to the right. Therefore, Richard had photoshopped himself. Someone had broken the most expensive statue in the hotel lobby. The manager interrogates four suspects among the guests to find out who's guilty. Melanie says, I'm not into art. I haven't even noticed this statue before. Steven says, Sorry, dude. I've been out skydiving all day long. Zach says, Don't worry. That sculpture was tasteless. I'm an art dealer and I can get you a new one. And Sophie says, I was chilling at the spa, so I didn't see anything. Can you spot who's guilty? <laughs> Melanie, she lost her left earring in the very middle of the crime scene. Cassie gets an invitation from three hotel guests. Gail shows her picture of a fancy villa and says, I'm a billionaire. You're welcome to come over to my villa and stay for as long as you want. Bella hands her two tickets to the opera and says, We can go together tomorrow night. And Ricardo just shows her the keys to his boat and offers a ride across the globe. But only one of these offers isn't fake. Can you help Cassie make the right choice? There's a for sale sign near the villa, so Gail's offer doesn't look trustworthy. Take a closer look at the gate on the opera ticket. It expired centuries ago, so Cassie should trust Ricardo. Cassie goes to the hotel restaurant to have dinner. There's a butterfly hiding among the buffet. Can you find it?
It's over here. Hey there! Are you ready for another brain workout today? Because I have 30 new riddles for you. I'll show you a pair of people for each one, and you'll have to decide which person doesn't behave wisely. You'll have 7 seconds per riddle to make your decision. Every right answer will award you one point. Ready? Grab a pencil and a piece of paper, and let's get started. Charlotte and Elizabeth are doing some homework. Charlotte is going to iron some clothes, and Elizabeth is about to cook. Who's not being smart? Elizabeth. Charlotte's safe because the iron is turned off. Lucas and Liam are going on a field trip with their kids. Lucas is distracted while his daughter is climbing a tree. Liam is talking to another parent while his son is petting a dog. Who is wrong? Lucas. The branch his daughter is climbing is cracking, and she is about to fall. Ava and Olivia are finally leaving home for their first night out after maternity leave. Ava decides to walk, and Olivia is waiting for a taxi. Who is not ready? Olivia. She forgot to finish her makeup. Michael and Logan are bloggers who take selfies in dangerous places. This time, Michael is taking a selfie while surfing on a huge wave, and Logan is taking one standing on the edge of a bridge. Who is not smart? Michael. In Logan's case, at least there are people around who can call emergency services if something goes wrong. Michael is alone. It's early morning. Ian and Nolan are driving their kids to school. Who is not smart? Nolan. His child is not in the car. Jackson and Emma are volunteering at an animal shelter. Jackson is feeding the cats, and Emma is washing the dogs. Who is wrong? Jackson. He gave the cats dog food by mistake. Scarlett and Ellie are going to bed. Scarlett kept her door open so her cat could enter during the night, while Ellie prefers to close her door. Who is not smart? Scarlett. You should always close your bedroom door at night. In case of fire, it'll stop the flames for a while and give you more time. Riley and Isabella are taking their kids to kindergarten. Riley is riding a bike with her daughter, and Isabella and her son are going by car. Who is wrong? Isabella. Her child isn't wearing a seatbelt. Lily and Oliver have job interviews at 4 o'clock. Lily is ironing her best suit, and Oliver is waiting in the hallway wearing jeans. Who's not getting the job today? Lily. She must have forgotten the time. The interview is in 5 minutes, and she's still at home. Sophia and Aiden are working in the garden. Sophia is watering the flowers while her cat is walking around. Aiden is mowing the lawn while his child is playing nearby. Who's not smart? Aiden. It's dangerous to use the lawnmower when children are close by. John and Brandon are making breakfast for their kids. John is making sandwiches, and Brandon is making eggs with bacon. Who is wrong? Brandon. He forgot to turn on the stove. Thomas and Abigail are going on a date. Thomas arrived a half an hour early and decided to buy some flowers. Abigail just returned from London and is driving to meet him. Who is wrong?
Abigail. She's driving on the left side of the road. Ryan and Kaylee are having fun outside during their Christmas break. Ryan is learning how to skate on the lake, and Kaylee is skiing in the forest. Who is not smart? Ryan. The ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help him. Asher and Haley are enjoying their vacations. Asher is chilling at the beach, and Haley is climbing the highest mountain around. Who is not behaving wisely? Asher. Although Haley's activity is quite risky, she seems to be okay. But Asher fell asleep at the beach and is going to get a sunburn. Chloe and Avery are having some quality time on Friday. Chloe is reading a book, and Avery is watching a documentary. Who is missing something? Avery. She forgot to turn off the oven, and something's burning. Hannah and Maya are meeting their friends today. Hannah arrived by bike and is waiting for her friend by the house. Maya arrived by car, opened the doors, and is waiting for her friend to come down. Who is not smart? Maya. It's not safe to stay in the car with unlocked doors. A stranger can quickly get in the car and she wouldn't be able to do anything from the front seat. Mason and Jacob are going on a trip to the desert, where they'll spend a whole day. Who is not adequately prepared? Mason. The sun is powerful, and he's not wearing a hat. Emily and Madison are spending their time outdoors, but it's not their lucky day. Emily stumbled and fell in some mud. Madison was swinging but fell. Now, they both are getting up. Who made a mistake? Madison. The swing is still moving, and it may hit her head if she gets up. Aubrey and James are cleaning the house. Aubrey is listening to music while vacuuming the living room, and James is washing the windows. Who is not being smart? Aubrey. The vacuum cleaner isn't plugged in. Mia and Ethan are going on summer vacation. Mia is going to Greece, and Ethan is visiting his brother in Sydney. Who is not smart? Ethan. He's packed shorts and swimwear, but he won't need them because it's winter in Australia. Carter and Layla are in a hurry for work. Carter is walking while talking on his phone, and Layla is running while texting. Who's going to be late? Layla. She's looking at her phone and doesn't see the pit she's about to walk into. Leah and Aaron are driving to meet their friends. Leah has all of her things scattered in the car. And Aaron is traveling above the speed limit. Who is not smart? Leah. It's not safe to keep unprotected things inside the car. In case she stops suddenly, something can hit her very hard. William and Daniel are driving and are late for work. Who is wrong? Daniel, he's driving way above the speed limit in the neighborhood. Jane and Amelia are resting in the park after running 5 miles. Jane is eating, and Amelia is drinking water from the fountain. Who is not smart? Amelia, the warning sign says that the water isn't drinkable. Max and Ezra were driving around the desert and got stuck in the middle of nowhere. They burned a spare tire to produce some smoke. 
Max stayed close to the tire, and Ezra walked away in search of something helpful. Who is not smart? Ezra, you should never leave the vehicle. Chances are the rescuers will notice the smoke and find you. But if you go, you might miss them. Both Jonathan and Savannah didn't sleep well and are starting their morning. While Savannah is preparing some coffee, Jonathan is taking out the trash. Who is doing something wrong? Jonathan. Instead of the trash, he's taking out the old toys they collected to donate. Stella and Aurora didn't study for the test. One of them decided to try her best, and the other is planning to cheat. Can you spot who's cheating? Stella. She has a lot of bags surrounding her, so she must be trying to hide something. Miles and Cooper were walking in a park when a sudden storm erupted. Lightning struck a tree, and Miles decided to hide under it. Cooper entered a little shack nearby. Who is wrong? Miles. The belief that lightning never strikes in the same place twice is just a common misconception. An indoor shelter is one of the best places to hide. Leo and Melanie are preparing a barbecue party. Leo is cooking, and Melanie is decorating the yard. Who is not smart? Leo. While he's cooking, the meat is spoiling in the direct sun. Congrats! That's it for today. Now, sum up your points. If you got 10 points or less, you scored below average. Eh, don't be sad. It's just the beginning. You can check out some other riddles to train and prepare for the next round. If you got between 10 and 25 points, you scored average. Great! You're on the right way! And finally, if you got 26 points or more, you're in great intellectual shape. Here's an interactive medal from me and my admiration. Good for you! Two best friends, Emily and Luna, came to a popular and expensive hair salon. At first, the administrator told the girls they had just one available hairstylist. But after making a phone call, she happily announced she had found another hairdresser. Emily and Luna could have their hair done at the same time. But in the process, it dawned on the girls that one of the hairstylists was fake. Which one? Hairstylists are using regular scissors, but instead of hairspray, the one on the left is holding a can of bug spray. Yeah, that's a big clue right there. Mary and her younger brother Alex were mushroom hunting in the forest. They started to quarrel, so Alex got angry and ran away. After several minutes, Mary rushed after him. She was still fuming but also worried. Soon, the girl reached a small river. A man was sitting on the shore. Did you see a teenager here? Mary asked. Yep, he's just taken a boat and made it to the other side. But Mary didn't believe the man. Why? The boat is indeed on the other side, but the paddles are lying next to the man. How could the boy cross the river without them? Three prisoners are sitting at a table having dinner, but one of them is wealthy. Can you guess who it is? It's not the guy with the steak and shrimps. The little tag on his shirt reveals he's a chef, and he likes to prepare a special treat for himself. The guy with the jewels shows that he's well off, but in prison, jewelry is basically worthless. It's the third guy. Wealthy people try to keep a low profile in prison, not to be targeted by others. That's why he doesn't flash any valuable possessions or his status. It's Friday and all the students have gathered in a big lecture hall to take the end of term exam. The teacher has been informed that one student is going to cheat. Can you tell which one? Pay attention to every detail.
It's student C. It looks as if he's trying to remember what he's read, but he has all the answers written on his hand. Marta was walking through the park near her home in the evening. It was dark and there was nobody around. Suddenly, someone grabbed her from behind and they bolted away. Marta took off after them. She was pretty sure this person was a woman, but she couldn't make out her appearance or clothes. When Marta ran inside, she saw three teachers. The girl looked at them attentively and soon figured out which one of them had taken her bag. Can you do the same? The woman in the middle wouldn't be able to run away with a cast on her leg. The one on the right doesn't have anything in her hands. Where would she hide Marta's bag so quickly? But the woman on the left has a big shopper bag on her shoulder. A real teacher wouldn't need to carry it in the classroom. So she was definitely the one who took the bag. Jonathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet, but his whole family knew about his plan. They were aware the guy would return at midnight, so they decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. The prize would be no chores for them for one week. So as to not fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make a pizza, and Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started to meditate. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. Look at this picture closely and try to figure out who's from the future. Well, I'm pretty sure there was no flashlights in the Stone Age, so it has to be this guy here. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife, who had recently lost it. Luke happened to have found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife, so Luke can give it back to her? It's the third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. Lisa was a famous top model. She was found unconscious in her dressing room during a photo shoot and taken to a hospital. Doctors said she had a severe allergic reaction. But when Lisa came to her senses, she insisted she hadn't eaten anything all day. The model's manager was very concerned and interrogated everyone who'd been around. Lisa's stylist said that she had applied Lisa's makeup and indeed hadn't seen her eat anything. The cleaning lady said she had cleaned the dressing room with organic, non-allergenic products. Lisa's main rival, Nora, said that she'd been watching the shooting all day long. She hadn't noticed anything suspicious. Who's the culprit? It was the stylist. Lipstick was the only thing Lisa could have swallowed that day. In the middle of the night, Dennis woke up because of a loud crash. One of the kids must have been out, but they know they aren't allowed to leave at night. The man went to check on the children. All three of them, Catherine, Ruth, and Larry, seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Look at the kids and try to figure out who sneaked out of the house. It was Ruth! There's a dirty sneaker hidden behind the curtain and several pieces of french fries under her bed. Brenda was traveling by train. It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Brenda was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet! There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping. Rachel was reading a book on her phone, and Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? It was Helen. At first, she had her sleeves rolled up, but now they're covering her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. Sarah bought some ice cream on Saturday, but kept the flavors in secret. 
When she woke up on Sunday, all the ice cream was gone. She asked everyone in the house if they knew anything about it. James answered he had gone to work early that morning and hadn't seen anything. Mary said she wanted to have the new caramel ice cream in the afternoon. She felt bad she was going to miss it. John didn't even know there was ice cream in the house. But he was looking forward to trying it. Can you figure out who knows something? It's Mary. The ice cream flavors were a secret. She couldn't be sure there was a caramel taste among them. Can you tell who's a real mermaid here? The second one is a guy, so he definitely isn't a mermaid. The girl on the right is chilling in the sun, and she's out of the water. Mermaids wouldn't do that because they dry out in the sun. So the real mermaid must be the one on the left. There were some thefts at the supermarket. There were three cases in total, in January, April, and June. The security camera recorded these videos. The security officer tried to have a closer look and suddenly noticed one detail. After that, the identity of the thief became clear. What did he notice? It was the pregnant woman. The attentive security officer noticed that in January, she looked about six to seven months pregnant. In June, she looked the same. Hmm, seems like it's the mysterious case of the baby bump that was really a canned ham. One day, a thief decided to rob the local bank. He came up with a brilliant plan to dress up as one of the bank tellers and try to sneak into the vault. As he was approaching the vault, he saw a security guard standing right in front of the door. The robber hadn't anticipated this, so he hid and watched the guard carefully when one of the actual bank tellers walked up to the door. The security guard said 12. The worker answered 6 and got in. Then another teller came up to the vault. When the security guard said 6, the person answered 3 and was granted access. The thief nonchalantly walked up to the security guard when the guard said 10. The robber confidently answered 5. He was arrested immediately. So why was the thief's answer wrong and what could he have answered instead? The response has to do with the number of letters